Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today we're going to be discussing the drive cycle procedure for a 1996 and newer Land Rover. You are going to need one of these OD2 scanners here, and these are under 30 bucks. I'll have a link to it in the video description box below. They hook up to your Land Rover right underneath the driver's side footwell area. And I'm going to show you guys what your connector looks like, and they might be hidden underneath some trim, but they're very easy to locate. Once you plug them in, you'll get power to the unit. And all you want to do is make sure that you turn the key to the very last position so the check engine light is on, but the engine is not running. And go ahead and connect that OD2 reader. And now we can fully check to make sure that all the monitors are ready and you're going to be able to get your Land Rover to pass an emissions test with no problems. And before we jump into the drive cycle, check out the Smog Tips playlist. And once you click on the playlist, you can actually watch the whole drive cycle in process, where I'm going to show you how to do this on the road. And if you need further assistance on how to understand these inspection monitors, check out this video titled, What to Do to Smog a Car. Hello world, this is Random Fix. In this video today, we're going to be discussing the Land Rover drive cycle procedure. And this is a very easy five-step procedure to follow. That way you can go ahead and get your Land Rover to pass an emissions test. There's some basic vocabulary we need to understand before we actually dive into the actual procedure. The very first thing here is OBD2. When OBD2 is referenced during the video, it basically means it's referring to the onboard diagnostics type 2. This started in 1996. It's actually a wonderful solution to what was happening, which was every vehicle manufacturer had their own port, and the whole thing was a mess. So with OBD2, now you can buy one of these cheap $30 scan tools, and you could pull some codes on the vehicle, and the codes can basically tell you what's happening with the vehicle. These codes are referred to as Diagnostic Trouble Codes, or DTCs. There is going to be pending codes, hard set codes. But a pending code is one where the vehicle has detected an issue, but it has not triggered the check engine light because it's looking for more information versus a hard set code. And a hard set code is one where the check engine light is triggered and you're going to need to get both of these issues dealt with before you actually go and attempt to do the drive cycle here in the Land Rover. And MIL stands for Malfunction Indicator Light, a.k.a. the Check Engine Light, Service Engine Light, Service Engine Soon Light. When you're using an OBD2 reader, like I showed you in the very beginning of the video, and OK on the screen is the same exact thing as complete, set, and ready. INC is short for incomplete, unset, not ready. NA basically means that monitor doesn't apply to your vehicle, so go ahead and skip it. And here's five monitors that are listed in order, and this is the order that they normally set in. So the very first monitor to normally set is the oxygen sensor heater monitor. And the oxygen sensor heater monitor is very important because it helps the oxygen sensor get up to speed faster so the vehicle can do a better job of controlling its emissions. Then we have the oxygen sensor. And if your vehicle is a V8, most of the times you're going to have at least three or four oxygen sensors depending on the setup. And there's an oxygen sensor before the catalytic converter. That's known as the pre-cat or upstream oxygen sensor. There's one after the catalytic converter. It's called the post-cat or downstream oxygen sensor. And the way the vehicle actually determines the efficiency of the catalyst is by using these two in conjunction with another. And that's how that's measured. So this is very important to get the oxygen sensor heater and oxygen sensor heater monitor ready first. We got the EGR monitor. We have the catalyst monitor. 
and the catalytic converter is the part and the cat monitor that's shown on the OBD2 reader is the actual monitor or the inspection monitor. We have the EVAP system and EVAP is short for evaporative emissions control system and in short this keeps the gas fumes out of the atmosphere. When you're doing this test, you want to go ahead and use a stopwatch because it will really help. Some technical parameters, you want to make sure your check engine light is really off. There's no pending or stored codes. And especially on those 2010 and newer vehicles, you want to make sure you don't have some sort of permanent code because those basically need almost 15 warm-up cycles and a lot of driving to go ahead and set and there's different requirements for different vehicles. You want to make sure your gas level is between a quarter to three quarters. Three quarters recommended. Park on level ground. Avoid sudden acceleration unless otherwise noted. Sharp turns or sudden braking. Avoid hills. Battery needs to be good and so does the alternator check all the grounds and make sure there isn't excessive corrosion around the battery. If there is, go ahead and clean that before you attempt to do the drive cycle here because a bad battery will keep the emissions monitors from actually setting because if the battery is bad and once you turn the vehicle off, it may be doing something funny. All accessories like the rear defrost, lights need to be off. AC needs to be off and do not use cruise control while you're doing this drive cycle. Avoid extreme conditions in weather and in the road. And the night before, keep your keys out of the ignition, lock the doors and far away from the vehicle because a lot of the new Land Rovers will detect the keys. And if the vehicle detects the keys, it may keep it from going into a deep sleep. And if it doesn't go into a deep sleep, some of the monitors like the oxygen sensor heater monitor will not run. And this is the actual drive cycle. It's a very easy drive cycle. And this works for any 2006 and newer Land Rover, including the LR3 V8 for 2005. And I'll show you how to go ahead and set some of those earlier Land Rover vehicles as well after this. So this is very simple. You want to make sure your vehicle is really free of any fault codes in the powertrain. And the powertrain codes can basically be stored in the engine control unit, the transmission control unit, transfer control unit, and the rear differential unit. And you want to check for these codes before you actually start the drive cycle here. And you want to make sure that the coolant temperature is going to be below 140 degrees. It's always best to do this in the morning time. Step three, you're going to go ahead and drive gently around the city and do not exceed speeds of 50 miles an hour for 10 minutes and keep it very light with the throttle. Step four, find yourself a very nice open road and drive for 50 miles an hour for a solid two minutes and keep the speed very constant. Step five, once the two minutes of 50 miles an hour is done, let your foot off the gas pedal. And without using the brake, you're going to need to come down a complete stop. And the way you do this is you go and try to use a freeway off ramp in a very unpopulated area. And once the vehicle has stopped all the way to a coast, you then want to go ahead and take your foot off the brake pedal again and let the vehicle just go ahead and crawl around without using the gas pedal for about a minute. And once that step of crawling around for a minute has been achieved, you are done. So now you're going to use that OBD2 reader that I showed you in the very beginning of the video and you're going to check the monitors on the vehicle and when you get back from your test drive you want to scan it and if everything is done it'll say zero codes incomplete seven that are complete and four that don't apply and zero codes found 
and this is a 100% chance that you're going to go ahead and pass your emissions tests as long as you haven't altered anything on your vehicle and your vehicle passes the visual inspection as well which I'll cover a little bit later and if any monitors are unset you want to go ahead and focus on those unset monitors so if your oxygen sensor is not getting set you want to focus more on the warm-up let the vehicle idle for about 10 to 15 minutes without moving it without touching the gas pedal if some of the other monitors like the EGR aren't set you want to let off the gas pedal and focus more on the coasting on your day-to-day -day drive if the evap isn't set make sure that the gas level is between a quarter to three quarters park on level surface and avoid those sudden lane changes braking and for older Land Rover vehicles 2006 and older this is the drive cycle and this is the night before drive cycle that I like to complete. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and use the OD2 reader. Make sure there's no codes uh, stored in the vehicle and clear everything. Then you want to let the vehicle ignition stay on for 30 seconds. Start the engine. Let it idle for 5-10 minutes. Drive around town for about 10 minutes. And this will complete a cycle and the cycle is where the engine coolant temperature rises 40 degrees from when it started then shut the engine off park on a level surface three quarters of a tank of gas keys out of the ignition lock the doors no cruise control or AC are to be used during the rest of this drive cycle here which you'll do the very next morning and very next morning you're going to go ahead and begin off with putting the key in the ignition for 30 seconds and while the 30 seconds is happening you can use that OBD2 reader to see if there's any stored codes in the computer's memory and once you've ensured that there's no codes go ahead and make sure that the temperature requirement here is met start the engine allow the engine to idle in park for two minutes then you want to do step four which is you're basically going to accelerate to zero to 35 miles an hour and with very light pressure on the gas pedal and then instead of coming to a complete stop what you're going to do is just remove your foot off the gas pedal here and you're going to coast down to almost a complete stop not using the brakes at all and then you want to go ahead and repeat step four because this calls for two light accelerations go ahead and repeat the second one again close to a complete stop once that's completed you're going to do two medium accelerations here and with this you can just break to a complete stop that's not a problem Step six, you're going to do two hard accelerations to 55 miles an hour and really get on that gas pedal. Step seven, you want to cruise at 60 miles an hour for five minutes and don't drop speeds below 35 miles an hour. So you're going to have to find yourself a nice open country road for this. Step eight, you're going to cruise at 50 miles an hour for five minutes. Step nine, you're going to cruise at 35 miles an hour for five minutes. And step 10, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and stop the vehicle. And once the vehicle is stopped, you're going to go put it in drive. Take your foot off the brake pedal and let the vehicle just crawl around with no gas or brake input for two minutes. And lastly, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put that vehicle in park and let it idle for two minutes. And what you're going to have to do now is use that OBD2 reader that I showed you in the very beginning of the video and scan the inspection monitors to check to see which monitors are on set. And just know with some of these older Land Rover vehicles, you may have to complete this drive cycle here four times.
because the older your vehicle gets, the more miles you drive, the older the components are going to get. And this can make it harder for your vehicle to actually set these monitors. So the Land Rover drive cycle here is not an easy one. And it may take you some time. And if you do have to repeat this process, you just need to repeat the process of steps 1 through 11 here. Don't worry about that night before cycle and one other thing too is some of these older Land Rovers are made by actual Ford and BMW as far as the engines so you want to make sure that you pay attention to that so on the 2004 Land Rover HSC this with the 4.4 liter was actually made by BMW I had one of these and the same thing here with the Freelander in 2002 for example this came with that Ford 2.5 v6 so you'll see those video links at the end of this video here and if you want to watch those those might be more productive for you hey guys really quick if you're finding this video to be helpful and you're enjoying the content please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel as well as it lets youtube and me know that i'm doing a good job and bringing you guys value content thanks and once your monitors are set you're ready to now go and get the vehicle smogged. Remember, if your vehicle is a 96 through 99 vehicle, you will have to get the vehicle tested on a dyno at 15 and 25 miles an hour. They're going to use a gas analyzer to test the vehicle's emissions. They're going to test your gas cap. They'll do some other tests. And they're also going to do a visual. Even if you have a 2000 and newer vehicle, they're going to do a visual. But on a 2000 and newer vehicle, they're just going to check for the OBD2 readiness. So they're going to plug in their OBD2 reader into the vehicle from the state and check the monitors. Remember, the visual inspection consists of checking for altered parts like cold air intakes, throttle spacers, cracked vacuum hoses, missing catalytic converters. They're going to do a visual smoke test to make sure that you don't have clouds of smoke coming out the tailpipe. And as of the end of 2020, this is the current rules here for California. And California happens to be one of the stricter states. So you have to check the regulations for your own state. Here in California, if you have a 96 through 99 vehicle, you can have any one monitor show incomplete and still pass. Now, depending on the smog station, they may just go ahead and plug in their OBD2 reader is not connected to the state, see that you have a monitor that's incomplete, and tell you to keep driving because they don't want anything to come back to them to show that on their record for the shop showing that they passed X amount of vehicles with unset monitors. So if that happens to you, go to another station and... If you have a 2000 and newer vehicle, only the EVAP could be unset. And with diesel powered vehicles 98 through 2006, basically all the monitors have to show complete. On newer diesel vehicles 2007 and newer, you can have any two monitors show incomplete. And remember when you're selling a car, it's the seller's responsibility to make sure that they supply the buyer with a smog certificate and normally there's no way of waiving this requirement unless you're selling to a dealer or dismantler so even if you write as is on the title that doesn't really mean anything because if it goes to court you're most likely going to lose that suit unless they're a dealer or dismantler and if you're a buyer never buy a vehicle unless all the inspection monitors are ready and 99% of the times, if the inspection monitors are not ready, is because somebody has erased that check engine light on purpose to cover up an existing issue, whether it's a dealer or a private seller. And 1% of the time is caused by a weak or faulty battery. And if this is the case, you still have to find out why that battery is dying because you could have a potential short you could have an alternator and when there's a bad battery in a vehicle all kinds of funny things start happening from 
smog emissions monitors not getting ready to transmissions acting up and it's a big list of potential issues i'm going to show you guys the configuration on a typical four cylinder vehicle here and on a typical four cylinder vehicle you have two oxygen sensors and one catalytic converter so here's the vehicle here this is the engine and as the exhaust makes it out the engine block through the headers down pipe and it will go past this upstream oxygen sensor which is known as the pre-cat oxygen sensor and then the exhaust will go through the catalytic converter here then the downstream or post-cat oxygen sensor will go ahead and get a reading and the way the computer is able to verify the efficiency of the catalytic converter here is by taking this reading and this reading and comparing them based on the parameters of what the vehicle manufacturer has set up to verify that this in fact is working correctly and after the emissions pass the downstream oxygen sensor it goes through a little resonator here down through the tailpipe through the muffler and now to the atmosphere and here on a six cylinder or a cylinder i'm going to show you guys a couple of diagrams down here on these you can have three or four oxygen sensors depending on the setup and one or two catalytic converters so if we look at this diagram right here this is a v6 motor so it has a total of six cylinders three on one side three on the other side thus making it a v6 motor and whatever side cylinder number one is located on that's called bank one so if you're dealing with an emissions issue and it tells you that sensor one on bank two is bad or acting up, you can look at the opposite side of cylinder one and know that this the opposite side. This sensor right here that may potentially need to get replaced. So we have one, two, three oxygen sensors on this vehicle and one catalytic converter. And this too is a V6 motor. The only difference is the cylinder number one is located on the lower side here and this is bank one and now this is bank two and here on this setup here this is a v6 motor and we have a total of six cylinders again three on one side three on the other side but now we have one two three four oxygen sensors and one two catalytic converters and if it was a V8, it would just have an extra cylinder on each side. And here's my top eight tips to pass an emissions test. The very first one is going to be make sure that you smog right the very first time. So if you know your vehicle has an issue, you want to make sure to get that issue fixed before you try to go and smog the vehicle. And you should never really fail an emissions test because with these simple scan tools you can verify that all the monitors are ready and before you go to the station you can just do a simple plug-in and it'll let you know that the car's inspection monitors are ready and you can do this with confidence knowing that you're going to go and pass now because any failed emissions data will get reported to Carfax and AutoCheck and this can actually reduce the value of your vehicle. Number two you want to make sure that the check engine line is off but working so before you purchase a vehicle put the key in the ignition and turn it to the very last position and verify that the check engine light is there and I've seen people actually remove the check engine light three this really helps with those 96 through 99 vehicles you want to make sure that the tires are properly inflated as this will lessen the load and will allow vehicle better operations the same thing with the oil here the oil actually contains a lot of the hydrocarbons and since they're going to be doing a real emissions test using a gas analyzer you want to make sure you reduce the hydrocarbon numbers here and this is a simple oil change and tip five you want to go ahead and take the vehicle for a very long test drive before you reach the emission station and leave the car on if possible before you get it tested 
the emissions probe. Tip number six, use some fuel additives. I personally love the Lucas Oil upper cylinder loop. You'll find a link to this in the video box below, as well as anything else that I showed you guys in the video. Tip number seven, you want to avoid wet weather. And this is not to say that you cannot pass an emissions test with it raining outside. However, you'll just get much better results if the tires are dry. And tip number eight, do not disconnect the battery unless you have a battery saver device set up. And these are about 15 bucks. And basically this will keep your cards, computer data, your clocks, your radio stations all in sync. And remember, the only real solution oftentimes is to repair or replace the component. So there's no such thing as a miracle in a bottle. But if you're looking for a quick fix for your catalytic converter, just because maybe you don't have the time or money to go and have that issue fixed, I have a couple of videos down in the video box below that cover such products and I'll give you guys my honest and truthful review of them and some preventative tips here. I love doing everything myself so if you can try doing some of the simpler repairs yourself like the engine oil changes, transmission fluids, differentials, changing the filters, the engine air filter, the cabin air filter, the fuel filter, if you clean your throttle body, change the wipers, and do the brakes on your own vehicle. This is such a nice thing to start doing because the more you learn about a vehicle, the better off you're gonna be as far as taking care of it. And what I have found out from my own experience of working on cars over the last 27 years is the time that I actually save doesn't even compare to the amount of money because a lot of people will go and get their oil changed at the dealer and that could take one hour or two hours. Most of the times I'm able to change the oil on my vehicle in under 15 minutes. So not only did I save between 60 to 80 bucks, but I saved myself at least 45 minutes of not having to wait around and I got it done and I can go move on with my life. All right, guys, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If it was, please comment down below and let me know. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. There will also be a little tiny bell. You can click on that bell. And anytime I post videos that are aimed to save you time and money, you guys will get notified. Thanks again.